John Morant has once again found himself at the center of controversy after brandishing a gun on Instagram Live for the second time in two months. For those of you who are unfamiliar with John Morant, he is an NBA superstar who currently plays for the Memphis Grizzlies. He's commonly regarded as one of the biggest up and coming stars in the league. Two months ago, he was all over the news as he brandished a firearm on Instagram Live and ultimately was suspended for eight games. It appeared he learned from his mistake as he posted a statement taking accountability for his actions and also announcing that he was checking into a two week counseling program to learn how to manage stress. Fast forward to two days ago and he has once again been caught lashing a gun on Instagram Live. So we're gonna do a deep dive and take a look at everything that's transpired. First, I wanna use this verse kind of as a backdrop for the episode for this podcast. So it's Proverbs 26, 11 says, like a dog that returns to his vomit is a fool who repeats his folly. Like a dog that returns to his vomit is a fool who repeats his folly. So pretty graphic verse that depicts John Morant's actions here. I definitely don't wanna be a hypocrite. We're all probably guilty of doing the same thing, uh, you know, once we've been saved, returning to the same sin multiple times, really. Let's take a look at the video in question. Slow it down because everything's pretty fast here, but it's, uh, you know, just John Morant hanging out, having fun, listening to some music, friends recording. Pause it and you can see he just kind of has a gun in his hand. He flashes his gun. And so that's what everybody's talking about. That's kind of the controversy. So first, we're just going to take a look at this new segment from NBA on ESPN where they're talking about, uh, you know, everything going on and, and what the repercussions might be. So the Grizzlies posted an official statement. We are aware of the social media video involving John Morant. He is suspended from all team activities pending league review. We have no further comment at this time. They also mentioned that they're not sure of the legitimacy of the video. And so they're going to do, you know, they're going to take some time to research, make sure, you know, it's not doctored, it's not altered in any way. However, it appears unlikely that that would be the case. Let me fast forward to that part. Your insider, Adrian Wojnarowski, is here. And of course, you have been on the phone all day long with practically everyone, I'm sure, around the league. What are the things that you can tell our audience that we don't yet know? Uh, Greeny, uh, John Morant is facing the very real possibility of a suspension, a lengthy suspension, uh, to start next season after this latest incident with he and an apparent firearm uh, in his possession. This is twice in two months now. The league suspended him for eight games, really two of them uh, retroactive to really just two games earlier this season. Uh, I sense already today that Adam Silver is going to feel like increasing pressure uh, from other teams in the league who see this as much as, uh, as it impacts the Grizzlies, that it impacts them and their ability to market their players and their teams. I think there was a sense uh, with that eight-game suspension earlier and during last season, and that Adam Silver showed some restraint uh, in that edict with John Morant, took him uh, at his word that he would make better decisions. They met in league, the league headquarters. Now, the league's investigating. They're still going now to make sure that this was a legitimate video, that it wasn't mm -hmm. doctored in some way. Uh, Which I think is highly unlikely real, that it was doctored in, in any way. That is what it appeared to be looks pretty legit in John Morant's hand he again is going to likely face a significant suspension to start next season uh, the the commissioner has pretty wide-ranging latitude in terms of best interests of the league contract conduct detrimental to the NBA mm -hmm. to suspend uh, John Morant without pay for a significant period to start the season. All right, we will keep a close eye on that. Obviously, Woj, you'll be working the phone all day long, and as there is further information, we will bring it. So he's potentially facing a pretty long suspension. People on Twitter, a lot of fans are calling for a year-long suspension. They want him to forego all of next season. I think that's probably nuts. I think, you know, anywhere between 20 to 30 games is going to be more realistic for the NBA. The first thing that you know, I thought when watching all of this and, and seeing all this happen is that, you know, John Morant is really bringing this upon himself. It's not like, you know, he was at the club, got into an argument, somebody approached him, wanted to start something, you know, trying to get a settlement or something. And, you know, he reacted and, you know, punched the guy or whatever. Uh, John Morant is, you know, intentionally going on Twitter live, whether it's a friend recording or not, and showing, you know, waving a, a firearm 
in the air and this is what happened it really the same thing during the first video as well so he's choosing to do this both times really so it's it's you know a pretty intentional act so this interview took place about a month after the initial video of john morant and after he went to the counseling program so let's take a look you know all that stuff on my body how stressful can it be being john morant very um and i felt like you know I didn't pay enough attention to that, you know, when it got rough and, you know, I pretty much just let it all build up. And So real quick, so he is saying and in his statement uh, and he went to a counseling program for stress. He's saying that this is how he kind of deals with stress. Uh, later on, he talks about, you know, he was just trying to be free. Um, and so, you know, he's just acting crazy to, to try to deal with stress, um, which there's obviously better and healthier ways to deal with stress. Um, that's why I felt like, you know, I needed, you know, my time away to, you know, better myself and, you know, become a more healthy job. I admire you for that because at different points of my life, to be honest with you, I've had friends and family members suggest I do the same thing and I have done that. And for you to actually take that step is a very important one. Mm -hmm. When did you look in the mirror and say, I'm going to do this? Because it was reported a couple of days ago that it happened. But when did you say, I'm going to do this and it's necessary? Now that I made a, you know, terrible mistake, you know, being inside um, a club and, you know, went live. Um, I put myself in, you know, a bad position. Um, and also, it's, you know, my daughter. Mm -hmm. um, there's times where she even tell me if she's, you know, mm. had a bad day. And you know, I felt like, you know, if she can tell me that, then, you know, mm. I can be able to go and talk to somebody as well. Ja, when did you realize I need to get some counseling? Tell me that morning, your thought process, and when you entered. Uh, it was that morning, you know, when I woke up and, you know, seen my, you know, name on the, all over the media for, you know, bad reasons, the wrong reasons, which I didn't, you know, wanted to see. And, you know, I made a call um, and said, you know, I need to get away and, you know, I need to, you know, find myself again. And, you know, that's when I entered the counseling program mm -hmm. and, you know, I've been there for a couple of weeks now. When you get drafted, you go from being a member of the crew, a member of the family, to, in a lot of ways, these are your staff and employees because you're trying to put everybody on and you're trying to put everybody in position to be successful because they help you become who you are. So I know it's tough to figure out professionally who can roll with me and who I need to leave behind in order to chase my goals. So for you, what has it been like for you over these last couple of weeks? And I think this is important and probably something that a lot of professional athletes struggle with once they make it to the league and they get super popular, super famous, make a ton of money, uh, is really trying to decide, you know, which family members, which friends you bring along for the ride and, you know, which ones are really contributing to your success and your future and which ones are really holding you back. I think that's something we could do a, you know, a long video and, and have a discussion on that really, because it's something that really every, probably every single human goes through where, you know, even in high school, you know, you have that one friend who, you know, maybe you, you really click with, you really vibe with, they're super funny, but they're holding you back from all of the, you know, goals that you have in sports or in, you know, education. And even in, you know, after you graduate, even something I've struggled with myself is, you know, there's certain friends that only want to play video games with you, never support anything else that you are you know, really striving to do or be. So I think that's really important that as an NBA player, somebody that's ultra successful, that you learn, you know, pretty young in your career. Definitely has been tough because, you know, I'm big on loyalty, but, you know, I had, like I said, have to, you know, be there for myself after, you know, put myself in good position. So, you know, I have to, you know, find out, you know, who's really for me and who's going to help me, you know, be in good positions at all times. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that's the decisions I had to make, you know, decisions, you know, I felt good about mm -hmm. and very comfortable about that, you know, I'm going to be in a positive, you know, light now with everything, you know, that I've made, um, everything that I've learned um, in my two weeks. 
you talked about going live, but it's also in the news that Adam Silver, that you met with him today, and he suspended you for eight games for conduct detrimental to the league. What was that meeting like? Um, it was good. Um, pretty much, you know, an open discussion. Obviously, you know, he said, um, you know, things, you know, I need to, you know, be better at, but, you know, more of just, you know, showing his support towards me, um, you know, and I accepted that. And, you know, I also, you know, sent my apologies, you know, to everybody, you know, the league, you know, myself, my teammates, my family for, you know, putting that negative, uh, negativity towards, you know, um, all of us with a, you know, bad decision. What were you thinking and feeling at that moment when you decided to go live? Did you realize that you was going live? Did you think that you were just recording? What was your state of mind at that point? I'm pretty much just trying to be free. Mm -hmm. um, you no, know, I used that as an escape, which I shouldn't have. Um, and I feel like that's the reason, you know, I made many, you know, bad decisions, you know, in my past, um, which doesn't, you know, pretty much describes me, doesn't describe Jai as a person. You know, I'm a totally different person, you know, than what's been shown, you know, in the media. Um, and, you know, that's my job now. That's why I took that time away to, you know, become a better Jai so everybody really can, you know, see who Jai really is and, you know, what he's about. Absolutely. You are holding a gun. <laughs> And we both know how dangerous that can be. Whose gun were you holding? Well, the gun wasn't mine. Uh, you know, I, it's not who I am. I don't condone and, you know, any type of violence. Um, but I take, you know, full responsibility, you know, for my actions. Um, made a you know, bad mistake. Um, and I can see uh, the image, you know, that I, I painted, you know, over myself, you know, with my recent mistakes, but you know, in the future, um, I'm gonna show everybody who Ja really is, mm -hmm. you know what. So that part, I actually really don't like where they're asking, you know, whose gun it is. Um, and the reason for that, I don't think it matters whose gun it is. Well, well, it kind of does really in one scenario, I guess that was after a game in, I think Colorado. And so people are saying if he, you know, took the gun across state lines, that's a crime. However, outside of that, you know, if they're not obviously planning on doing anything illegal with it, and you know, obviously it's stupid to flash a gun around Instagram live, but if this was, you know, a white NBA player and it was a hunting gun, or, you know, he was talking about going hunting, he was flashing a gun, I don't, I think we'd be having a different conversation. So that's what I think. I don't think the conversation should be, whose gun is it? It should be, why are you being irresponsible with the gun that you own. But I, I don't think there should be any, you know, there's no real reason he shouldn't be able to own a gun. What I'm about and, um, you know, change this narrative that, you know, everybody got painted over me. And you know how this works. So now when the IG live video happens and the public sees you with the gun, now they go back and dig up everything that they feel oh like. Another thing, you know, I can't wait to, you know, finally, you know, say my side and, you know, even, you know, probably some adults, you know, a lot of fans and I realize, you know, my past mistakes isn't being, you know, a good role model. So, you know, me now is, you know, changing that, you know, finding ways to, you know, impact in an even better way, put a, you know, bright light on, you know, the younger future coming up to, you know, show them, you know, what what not to do and, you know, what to do. So, um just got to be better in that area, you know, be more responsible, be smarter and, you know, make better decisions. One thing we can learn is that when you have a platform, whether it's small, large, or in his case, you know, huge, you need to be a role model. And it's really, you know, you need to be a role model, whether you like it or not. It's just, that's what comes with the territory. Uh, and so you need to behave in a way that is acceptable for somebody that's a role model. All right, so that's the history of what's going on with John Morant. I think that the story is sad. Like I said, he's one of my favorite young up and coming basketball players. And so I'm really rooting for his success. However, when you make a mistake like this, you need to learn from that mistake and not repeat it. 
you know, repeating, it's just stupid. So I'm hoping that he learns from this and doesn't make the same mistake again. And if it does have to do with the crowd he's surrounding himself with, I hope he makes some changes there as well. Let me know what you guys think of the whole situation in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications as it really helps out the channel. And if you wanna stick around, watch the video that's on your screen as that's the video that YouTube thinks you should watch next. Peace.